So I wanted to show you this experimental rooting system I have going with cactus in a charcoal. The rationale here is like, uh, I think cactus root faster if they can sense that there's some moisture for their roots to tap into. But obviously there's a risk there that the cutting might rot if you keep watering it like it's in potting soil, say. The idea was to have the cactus sitting on a damp you know, material, but with a lot of air circulation. And charcoal has a very high uh, capillary action because this is just full of tiny, tiny pores. So it wicks water really well. And the system is basically a bunch of potting soil, just regular, whatever you would grow cactus in. And then about an inch of graded charcoal. So that charcoal sifted through I think uh, an eighth inch screen or no, a quarter inch screen and a half inch screen so that it's like that charcoal that's right in the middle between those two screens. Um, so the stuff on the top is pretty big and chunky, but the stuff down, let me show you in this one here. See that stuff is a little bit finer, but it's not, you know, really fine. So that charcoal down there is very damp. Like if you touch it to your skin, it's very cool. You know, it's, it's very damp. And this looks super healthy. It's been in here for over a week. And then I'll just put bigger charcoal, like whatever stuff around the outside to kind of like fill in the rest. I have it in a tray here. You fill the tray up every few days or whatever and the moisture wicks up through the potting soil and then it slowly wicks up through the charcoal. They're sitting on a damp material, but there's a lot of air circulation all through this whole thing. And so that's you know, gonna reduce the incidence of rot and mold and stuff. I have had one cutting that just rotted like super fast and I cut it off and I healed it again and I put it back and it did exactly the same thing. I think it was just really susceptible and I've seen mold grow on some others, but I don't recall losing any others. And typically they just don't really, they might grow a few specks of mold or something, which would be typical if you put it in anything with any moisture, even after it's rooted. Originally, I had kind of thought, well, it'd be cool to just root them this way and then just leave them because the roots are, you know, once they root, you probably noticed, everyone watching this probably noticed this already, but the roots grow really fast. So it's gonna be pretty quick when they get down and hit that potting soil and start feeding. You know, and I've done some that way where I just leave them like this and, and let them root. But usually what I do in, like in reality is I check them obsessively, like usually every day because I want to know how fast they're rooting and how they're doing. And, and I can fit like six of these in this tray and just keep using this same, you know, thing over and over again. And uh, when they root, I'll just pull them out and transplant them. But you definitely could do it this way. It, it uses a lot of charcoal, you know, which isn't necessarily cheap, even if you have to make it, it, you know, it takes time and energy. But when you transplant these into something bigger, you can just dump all that charcoal out and reuse it. And then, you know, use the potting soil in the bottom. So, you know, there's, that's an option too. But my initial impressions, and I've rooted quite a few cuttings this way, maybe like 25, 30 cuttings. From my experience with this, I know some people say don't disturb them or they won't root. That has not been my experience. I'll pick them up every day and look at them. And then, you know, one day there's nothing or there's maybe a little nub and the next day there's a root. As far as a uh, success rate goes, I've just been really impressed with this. I mean, you do get cuttings that are a little bit slower to root or extremely slow sometimes. But I remember having like this big tray set up and it was kind of like a sandy soil mix and I would water it like once a week or something. Um, to try to get the stuff to root. And there's just all different kinds of cuttings in there. A lot of the stuff just would not root and it was like months in there. And finally, I just set this up and started experimenting. I'd put them in here and a lot of them would just be like, boom, you know, roots like right away. Uh, I would say a lot of stuff roots in about seven to 10 days or seven to 14 days maybe. But I've seen roots show up as quick as like five days. I don't know if there's any special property to the charcoal besides the fact that it's good at wicking moisture and it's chunky and aerated. Uh, there could be. I tried perlite once, that didn't seem to work too well, but maybe a larger perlite, maybe lava rock could work the same way. But you know, I'm really interested in charcoal in horticulture in general and agriculture, so I'm always experimenting with it. These are cactus that are planted in straight charcoal. This one grew from about that size to what it is now. It's flowered like eight times this year. And it's been in straight charcoal since it was about this big. 
this one same thing was probably that big or smaller and it spent its life in straight charcoal and I just had to transplant it because it literally broke the pot it was in by growing too much. So these are just like a bunch of little desert cacti that I, I potted up in, in charcoal just to see what happened. It's just about gathering data, you know, it's not about proving that, you know, straight charcoal is the best thing to grow cactus in, it probably isn't, uh, but it's just interesting data. Here's one San Pedro in straight charcoal. I don't think it's the best thing, especially to grow the San Pedro in. Um, but you know, I just want to see what happens again. I will link a video on my other channel where I potted these up and I talk about some of the, you know, rationale for using charcoal in cactus and succulent culture. And I'll link a couple videos on how to make charcoal at home that are really, really easy. Like you need a shovel and a hose basically, and you can produce this stuff. That's how this was all produced. Uh, I'll show you the uh, a pit where I have a bunch of charcoal that I made. So I just have this covered so that uh, weed seeds won't blow into it. This system here is really simple. It's just a trench in the ground, which allows you to burn long wood without cutting it up. But you could literally do the same thing in like a Weber barbecue or something, as long as there's no air coming in from the bottom. Start a fire in the bottom, get a bed of coals, lay in a complete layer of wood so like most of the coals are completely covered. You know, you can see some in the bottom, but you want quite a bit of wood in there. So the oxygen is coming in from the top and the wood on top that's burning and flaming kind of uses all the oxygen up so it doesn't get down and burn up your the charcoal you've already made. And then as soon as your layer of wood gets down to where it's mostly coals or, or you know, the flame's starting to die down a lot, and you think, well, now the oxygen's starting to burn up your new layer of charcoal that you just made from that layer of wood. So you add another layer of wood and smother it off again. And when that burns up, you add another one, et cetera, et cetera. When the pit's full, you just spray it with a lot of water. Don't skimp on the water. Maybe put a sprinkler on it and leave it because if one little coal survives, it can uh, wipe you out overnight. Very easy. I have another method I use too that's just like kind of basically a brush pile that you burn and put out with a hose, but it's a little more complicated than that. On my other channel, I have videos on all that stuff. So I'll link like three different videos to stuff related to this video. So yeah, most of my cactus mixes are 50% charcoal. Most, most of them only have perlite because it happened to be in the mix already or I might have some around. But typically I prefer to use just charcoal as my aggregate um, and nothing else. You know, if you have wood waste and you can have a fire, um, even a small one, like if you can do little burn piles and stuff, just make it into charcoal because the stuff's great. It lasts forever just like other aggregates, it doesn't rot, it has a lot of cool properties. And uh, try this system out if you have charcoal around and let me know what you think. I've been super impressed with it and uh, I'm pretty much like, yeah, this is a great way to root cactus. I see some mold once in a while, like these look super clean. There might be a little mold on the, yeah, just a little mold on the bottom of that one, but that's typical. Root them in potting soil or even after they're rooted, if you plant them and water them and grow them, I mean, you can get mold. It's just whether the cactus is going to resist, you know, anything like that. And they usually do. Yep. Great aeration, great drainage, catches and holds nutrients so the plants can get them back. 